Hey everybody, um, I thought I would do a follow-up video to my last video, my only video, um, where I talked about edging uh, using tuck tape. I had a lot of great questions, so I thought I would give you uh, a few more tips um, because a lot of you were commenting on how sticky this tape is and that it was hard to work with. Uh, I agree with you 100%. This tape is pretty much the stickiest you can find out there, but it works like a charm. Um, since the last video, I have discovered a few tricks that will help you reduce the stickiness and make your tape a little bit easier to peel off. The first one, which is the one I do from time to time now, almost every time actually, is I have an old t-shirt or a towel, and after I measure the amount of tape I want, I put the tape on the towel and then remove it. And this reduces the stickiness by about 50%. So it's much easier to work with on your panels or on your canvas. I don't know how this works with canvas. I don't use canvas myself. I only use wood panels and it works perfectly. On canvas, I will leave it up to you to experiment. Another thing I wanted to tell you that I've learned over the last month or two is that when you are using this tape and you do not use the towel, maybe you have forgotten, and you have your tape on your wood panel. Again, I've only used wood panels. When your resin is completely dry and you want to take this off and you're afraid of it ripping and peeling, which it does sometimes and it causes, you know, a pain in the butt. If you take your heat source, your heat gun, your small hand torch, or in this case, a blowtorch, and you very lightly heat the tape up, don't scorch it, just lightly heat it up, it will make the tape super easy to peel off. Um, so that's a trick I've learned over the last uh, couple months. It works every time. Just be careful that you don't scorch your tape because it will melt onto your panel and it is a pain to take off with your fingernail or a knife or whatever. It's almost worse than it was in the beginning. The next thing I want to talk to you about is resin. I myself use resin on very large pieces. 24 by 24 is about the smallest piece that I do right now. And I'm looking for a piece, I don't have one available, but the thing that I've noticed over the my two years of working with resin is that even if I use the recommended amount of resin on the piece, there always is a problem. It never comes out perfect. There are pimples and fish eyes and waves. Um, there's the big pull away from the, the canvas or the, the board that I'm using. And it could be for a multitude of things, fingerprints, dust, hair, you name it. This stuff gets in my paintings all the time. So I have learned a little trick that helps me save time and save money. The first thing I do is instead of putting down a 100% measured thick layer, I half that. Because I know I'm going to do two levels anyway, two layers anyway, I mix up half the amount of resin and I put it on very thin and I use my hand and I get in all the nooks and crannies and I spread it out as best as I can, but I don't worry about imperfections. I don't worry about those little fish eyes. I don't worry about the little bubbles. I don't worry about the waves. I just put a thin coat on and let it dry overnight. Um, and then once that happens, I take off the tape between every layer. So once that tape is removed, I take my piece and of course it's gonna look messy. It's gonna have pullaways and fish eyes. It's gonna look horrible, so don't freak out. But what you do is you give it a light sanding. Light sanding at 80 or 100 grit sandpaper. Don't be afraid. You get in there, don't go too rough, but just get in there and give extra attention to the spots that have the fish eyes or the pullaways. Once that's done, clean it all off with some rubbing alcohol or I use Windex. You know, works for me. Once that's done, then you apply a next coat, a flood coat. But again, because you already have a layer of resin on, you don't have to use the advertised full measurement. You just don't. You already have a base layer of resin on there. So I use about three quarters of the amount that's recommended. So if they recommended two cups of resin, I use a cup and a half maybe for my last coat. Um, because what you're really looking for is the resin to just fill over the bad spots. The good spots are, are good. You don't have to worry about it. So once that's done, I've had a 
accuracy rate. They come out looking beautiful. There are no waves. That flood coat at the, the second step is just prime. It's beautiful. There's no issues at all. Um, so now that's what I'm doing every time. I'm not even worrying about using a full layer of resin with the recommended amounts because I know it's just going to be a waste of resin. So for example, if they recommend a two cup resin pour and I use two cups and there's a problem and then I have to re-pour it again with two cups, that's four cups of resin I'm using. Where now I'm using probably half of that total for a beautiful piece. It just takes me two layers, which it would have taken me anyway. So that's something I've found over the last couple of months. It saved me time, it saved me money, it saved me tons of stress because I used to worry so much overnight when my resin was curing that if it was gonna turn out, if it was not gonna turn out, especially for pieces that like I use that are you know, the sizes of doors. Um, the last piece I did was the size of a door and I knew that it was gonna be an issue. There's no way it was gonna be perfect. So I did those two layers and it worked out perfectly. It came out crystal clear. So that is my second huge tip for you. Um, the third one I wanna say, it's not really a tip, it's just a reminder. You really need to cover your pieces with some kind of shelter. Um, leaving your piece just out on your countertop or on your art table, it doesn't matter how much or how clean your art room you think you have, it's just not good enough. You have to, in my opinion, uh, do I have it here? Yep. Spray your air. It sounds really stupid, but it really works. So before you mix your resin and before you apply your resin, wherever you are and whatever your space you're in, just spritz your air all around for about maybe 30 seconds or so. And what that does is it'll get all the big dust particles, hair, it'll just bring it down. It just gets it out of your space. Once you're done resining and you've done your torch and your heat gun or whatever you need to do, cover that, cover that thing, get it covered. So what I use is I use old paint cans and I surround the, the piece with paint cans and then I put another canvas or another board on top of that piece. And then I take very large um, plastic bags that I got here in Canada, I got a Canadian Tire they're yard bags for leaves but they come in extra large size so they're huge they're awesome um you get about 20 for about six bucks and i just drape those right over the wood panels and it allows you to just take a sneak peek and make sure that everything's glossy and perfect um, and you just reuse them the resin if resin gets onto them you just peel the resin off and throw it in the garbage it's awesome so very environmentally friendly uh, I've been using the same ones for years now, so yay environment. So that's what I would suggest. You always have to cover up your pieces. Uh, don't leave it out. It's just not going to work. It's You're going to find something that's going to contaminate your resin, um, which is going to lead you to sanding it down maybe a third time, which means more money, more resin, more time. Um, what else do I have for you? Um, the last thing I want to say is that on my last video, um, there was some criticism and I got a lot of notes um, and I want you to say that all these tips and all these things that I mentioned to you are this is just my personal opinion uh, do whatever works for you if it doesn't work for you don't do it if you have a better suggestion let me know and I'll make do another video or I'll try your method um, in my opinion I create pieces with the intent of being in a gallery now that might not be true but I paint and I create as if they're gonna sell for a million dollars. Um, and with that intent, it allows me to create much more finished pieces. So me personally, I don't let my paint go over the edges. I sand down my edges on all my panels and I coat them with a, a color from the painting and then I coat them with polyacrylic and I make it super professional looking. Now, people were you know, arguing with me, saying they like their clients like the paint to go over. That's great. If you have someone who's willing to buy a painting from you with painting or paint over the edges, there's no argument. You're getting the money. Who am I to, to judge that? So for me personally, the clients that I have gained over the last couple of years, they want clean edges. So that's just me. So you don't have to try to convince me that your way is better or that my way is better. This is just my way. So do what you need to do. Um, 
And that goes on many subjects. If you don't agree with the tape I'm using, don't use it. You can use another kind of tape or let me know what tape works best for you. I use two types of resins. I use art resin and I use artworks resin, both for very different reasons. Um, use whatever kind of resin you want. Whatever works for you best, that's what you do. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I've been doing the resin now for several years. I, I think I'm a pro at it pretty much. Um, but I'm sure there are people out there that have tips and tricks that I'm not even thinking about. So let me know what you think and uh, keep on creating. Bye, everybody.